today I'm doing a video on tips for a job interview. So I help a lot of people with their CVs and resumes preparing to get a job. So when they actually do get that interview, I do get a lot of questions also. So first things first, when you're actually applying for a job online, you need to make sure your CV is up to date all the correct information and is done to a professional standard. Now I'm not going to talk too much about CVs in this video, I'll do that in another video. Today I'm just going to be focused on the interview. So you get that golden call and you have an interview, you're excited, you're proud, you're feeling accomplished and it's like oh my god, a big huge wave of anxiety and nerves kick in because in order to actually get that job you have to do a good interview. So being someone that probably has around 80% interview success, so by that I mean I would get offered a job 8 times out of 10. So I've worked in Ireland, I've worked in Canada, I've worked abroad, I've you know went for interviews for internships, for jobs, for college, for different things. So I am you know aware of what to expect and how to prepare myself. Prepare yourself before the interview. Don't leave it until the day before the interview to you know research what company is it you're going to work for, what do they stand for, what's their brand, what's their product, what do they sell. Research the company enough that you know exactly who you're going to work for. You don't want to prepare yourself night and day, go to an interview and then when the interviewer actually tells you, you know, a little overview of the job because they sometimes do that, you're thinking, what the hell did I apply for? This is not what I want to do. So you sell yourself, you go through blood, sweat and tears to then realise, I don't even want this job and yet you don't even want them to give you a call back. That's just a waste of time, energy, you know, you're wasting your time, you're wasting the interviewer's time and it's just no point. Another thing you need to really research is the actual position you're going for. You're going for an interview in a big TV company and the role you're going for is, you know, advertising but your heart is really, you know, to be on screen. Do not go into the interview talking about any other position because you're there for that one job. If you're going to go into a job for sales and advertising and talk non-stop about your love of being on the screen, everyone knows you need to get a foot in the door but don't make it too obvious at the start because they won't, because they'll pick the person that actually is speaking about the position with passion more than the person that's using it as a stepping foot because it's not, you're not really going to bring anything to their team. Yes, maybe to the company, but not to their team. The person that's interviewing you is in that department, is working for a specific job. So if you're not going to, you know, add to the team, they're not going to want to work with you. They're not going to hire you, simple as. So when it comes to research in a company, you don't need to know all the, the hard stuff, the statistics, you know, when it was founded, all of the kind of locomoco stuff, because the person that's interviewing you has worked there for a long time. They're most likely, you know, up high in HR, in recruitment, so they know the company 10 times more than you do. So if you go in, you know, trying to quote statistics and years, if you even get one of them wrong, you're blown it. So you're better off keeping it safe, there's no harm in mentioning, you know, their mission statement, what they stand for, achievements that they've accomplished, little things that shows you have an interest without being too know-it-all. Because if you're going to be a know-it-all, you need to know it all. You can't know half of it because it's going to be very, very obvious. So just save yourself the egg, save the interview with the cringe and just know your stuff. Prepare yourself question-wise. So... When you know a little bit about, when you know a lot about the company and the position, then that's fine. Those will cover those questions. When you're in an interview, they're not looking to know everything about the company because they already know that. They want to know about you. They want to know what you can bring to the table, who you are as a person and as a worker. So this is your time to shine. You have to sell yourself. And a lot of the time, people absolutely freak out with the question, tell me a little bit about yourself. Really? That is the easiest thing. I know it's a little bit, what do I say? Because you don't know how to phrase some things. But remember, you are the expert of your life. Nobody knows you like you do. So there's no right or wrong answer. You pick who you are. You know who you are. So my advice is, you know, instead of going into details like the typical work ethic words, like I'm a really hard worker, Um, you know, I'm... I'm very organised, I have great time management skills. Keep those words for the CV. This is about you. So my 
my best advice is so, you know, pick a couple of buzzwords about yourself. How would your friends and family describe you? How would you describe you? So, for me, I personally always get kind of linked in the category of outgoing, bubbly, loud, charismatic, you know, sociable. So, as a Leo, these are my main characteristics. So, when I'm in an interview, you know, it's, I can come across that way, that I'm not, you know, giving a phony impression, this is who I am. So, my example would be, you know, a really sociable person, I love working within a company and meeting new people and also using my own initiative independently to, you know, achieve goals. So, that's just an example of something that I would say that would relate to myself, so, a lot of people kind of, they freak out because they're trying to describe themselves, but instead of just using one buzzword. This is where you have to leave an impression. So you're going to be one out of several candidates. So during the interview, if you can say little things that can make them remember you, then that's a great thing. For example, you could say, I'm a really good team player. I played basketball for six years. So I was always a part of a team. Team working and multitasking skills was always something that I had to incorporate not only in my hobby, but in my personal life. And then that shown through my work ethic as well. So, you know, you're hitting who you are, a little bit about yourself, and then after the interview, they remember you as, oh, that's the girl that played basketball for six years. Like, there's a little thing that ticks in their head that separates you from the crowd, because if everyone's just talking about, you know, the typical things they talk about, then it doesn't matter how good you are, everyone is that good of a standard. There's nothing memorable you're leaving in their head. This is where you have to think outside the box. If you really want this job, and if you want to beat these other people, then you have to go that extra mile. So another thing with questions, try not to come across too arrogant, or you know, too confident, too know-it-all, or like, basically, snobby because what you think is a perfect candidate, the interviewer is going to be looking at you and if you come across as all, I've been here, I've been there, I've done this, I've done that, you need someone like me. They're gonna, they're not gonna want to work with someone like you because I personally would pick, you know, the nice friendly person that knows their stuff over the know-it-all that knows their stuff, but I don't wanna be sitting in the canteen with them. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's not just about how good you are in, the interview, it's about how good you're going to blend in in a working environment because the person in front of you may come across as, you know, completely professional as they are. That doesn't mean that everyone they work with isn't going to be like that. So you need to be very diverse, very open-minded, come across as, you know, that you can fit in with anyone, that you're here to do your job and to do well. So, appearance. Appearance is very important when it comes to an interview. Not about how pretty you are or how slim you are or, you know, how expensive your shoes are, but you need to dress the part. If you're going for a job in an office, then you need to dress in business attire going to the office. Dress to impress. I would always play a safe with a blazer and a short. That doesn't mean that you have to go over the top and go out and buy something. If you have a nice blazer and a short, you can wear, you know, a plain skirt, business trousers, it doesn't even have to be heels, just dress shoes so you look the part. If you're going to be working in an office, you need to, you know, not stick out like a sore thumb, like a little intern that's walking through the office. You want to look the part. And you don't need to go all out either. You can go into, you know, pennies or Dunn's or H&M and just get little, little pieces and then you can keep them for interviews down the line. So you're not really splashing out on one outfit, you're investing. Because if you have a good blazer, a good skirt and a nice shirt, you can wear them in future interviews without the stress of what to wear. And black is always a safe colour. If you don't have anything kind of really business suitable, play it safe and go with black. It's professional, you know, you look smart in it and you can't go wrong. If you're going for a job as a personal trainer, you don't need to wear heels and a dress. If you're going for a job in an insurance company, don't dress in flip-flops and jeans like you're going for Abercrombie. You know, no brand. If it's, you know, fashion is a little bit more leeway. They kind of like to see your creative side to you. So if it's for the fashion or retail industry, you can kind of play around a little bit. But business, keep it professional. And then the other industries, just, just know what you're going for and, you know, look at the people that work there. So punctuality, this is a huge one. 
always, always, always arrive early to the interview. Even if it's 15 minutes early, if for whatever reason your interviewer has a spare minute and comes out at, say, 5 minutes to 9 and you're not there, it doesn't show the best it doesn't show the best impression but if you arrive early you know sometimes you have to fill out an application before you even go into the interview it'll be hard to find a building you're going to you could be stuck in traffic anything could happen so you need to be prepared so the way an interview sees it if this person who's trying to get a job here can't be on time for the interview where impressions are a huge thing how are they going to arrive early on a monday morning to work crossed off a lot of the time they'll ask you about previous experiences in other jobs. If they say, explain the time that you took, explain the time that you took initiative. So straight away, you're going to freeze on the spot if you have not prepared. You're going to think, what job did I do? Where did I work? Your mind is going to go blank, your head's going to explode. And before you know it, you screw it up and, you know, chance is blown. The best thing to do is think of each job you have on your CV. You know, you're not going to know the questions they're going to ask you. You don't know what area they're going to focus on. But you think of each job that you worked and think of kind of little things around it. For example, when I worked in a restaurant, I was always multitasking. It was a fast-paced environment, customer-facing. So, you know, you always have to be friendly and willing to help. You have to be a really good team player in order to help other, other waitresses on the floor. And, you know, it's a very physically demanding job. There's not a lot of breaks. You don't get to sit down. You're constantly on your feet. And you just need to kind of take that, take those and use it in a question. So the power of the interview is being able to control what you say. The interviewer should only be speaking about 20% of the time when she's asking questions and the interviewee should be speaking 80% of the time. So if you find that you're that the person interviewing you is talking more than you or you know trying to fill in the gaps that's not a good sign of a good interview you're not giving them enough to go off you're not you're not talking enough they should be listening to how amazing you are and be like you know what i want her i'm gonna hire her you can't leave being you know someone that muttered a few words here and there because that's no use that's absolutely no use when the interviewer asks you at the end, do you have any questions for me? Please have a few questions ready. A lot of the time people say, oh no, that's fine. And when they say ask questions, do not ask about salary. Don't ask about benefits. Don't ask about time off. Don't mention holidays books, booked because it's not the best taste to leave in your interviewer's mouth before you walk out that door. A couple of questions that's good to ask is, what would you, what would you look for in your ideal candidate? So this gives them a chance to, you know, talk a little bit about what they are looking for. If you feel like you tick some of them boxes, then you can leave the interview feeling more confident. Another really good one I like to ask is, what's your favourite thing about working for this company? Because straight away, they let their guard down. They're speaking a little bit more for personal experience. You know, they could talk about they really like the opportunity to work with other brands. They like the location in the city. They like how, you know, there's a lot more growth for promotion and by you hearing what their favourite thing is that could influence you to want a job more so it's like oh I really enjoy that as well you know it's making more of a conversational bond rather than just A and B I'm formal you're formal there's no connection there but if you could turn it and make it a little bit more conversational you're more comfortable able to talk to yourself and they're you know getting a better impression of who you are as a person as well. Last but not least be confident. Remember who you are as a person. Any job would be lucky to have you. Don't take yourself or life too seriously. I love the quote, you know, what's meant for you won't pass you by. If you are meant to get this job and you're doing everything you can, if you're meant to get that, you will. If not, don't let it get you down. There's plenty of other jobs out there. Just keep going. Take it as a learning experience. If you've never been to that many interviews, it's really good to have the experience of going to them, to know what to expect, to know, you know, what makes you nervous, what you need to prepare for. And it really can get you that extra step closer to getting your dream job. So chin up, do well, and remember, they would be lucky to have you. Thanks very much for watching the video. I'll leave a link below to I'll leave a link below to my blog post about how to do a good CV and a resume and I'm also going to do one you know about the tips of the interview. If you have any questions at all feel free to message me. Thank you, happy job hunting!